Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee, with your daily devotion. Reading once again from this beautiful classic, A Year with C.S. Lewis, daily readings from his classic works. This selection today from Mere Christianity, a book that I try to read or skim at least every year. It's such an uh, amazing book. And I hope that if you've not read Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis, that you'll take some time and get a copy and get to reading it as quickly as possible. This selection is on the subject of morality. And uh, Lewis uh, just brilliantly says, there are two ways in which the human machine goes wrong. One is when human individuals drift apart from one another or else collide with one another and do one another damage by cheating or bullying. The other is when things go wrong inside the individual, when the different parts of him, his different faculties and desires and so on, either drift apart or interfere with one another. And then he does such a beautiful job with his illustrations and analogies. And it gives us one right here. You can get the idea plain if you think of us as a fleet of ships sailing in formation. The voyage will be a success only in the first place if the ships do not collide and get in one another's way. And secondly, if each ship is seaworthy and has her engines in good order. As a matter of fact, You cannot have either of these two things without the other. If the ships keep on having collisions, they will not remain seaworthy very long. On the other hand, if their steering gears are out of order, they will not be able to avoid collisions. Or if you like, think of humanity as a band playing a tune. To get a good result, you need two things. Each player's individual instrument must be in tune, and also each must come in at the right moment so as to combine with all the others. Two just really brilliant illustrations, I think, that do convey to us um, and help lay out for us the kinds of things that can go wrong with humanity, um, with our interpersonal relationships, and even in within our own selves. Uh, This, the Bible, of course, calls the problem of sin, the problem of self-centeredness, selfishness, that manifests itself in the kinds of thinking and behavior that ruins our relationships with others, that separates us from God, separates us from others, and even separates us from our true selves. And so I think this is really, really great to present us with the idea of these ships, each one needing to be seaworthy and upright, um, to not avoid, or to be able to avoid collisions, and then to be, to be actually, uh, if you're in a band, and to be an instrument, uh, to be in tune. That is, that A440 really means something. And isn't it great that God, in His providence, has created such a thing that we call A440? Where'd that come from? Um, And that's just beautiful. That's just brilliant that he would so artfully design sound and pitch uh, so that we could then use some of his stuff to create music and song. That's just awesome. Uh, This last paragraph is worth reading as well. Again, this is from Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. But there is one thing we have not yet taken into account. We have not asked where the fleet is trying to get to, or what piece of music the band is trying to play. The instruments might be all in tune and might all come in at the right moment, but even so, the performance would not be a success if they had been engaged to provide dance music and actually played nothing but dead marches, (laughs) okay? And however well the fleet sailed, its voyage would be a failure if it were meant to reach New York and actually arrived at Calcutta. He's so right on there. Such a great way to think about morality. Um, And I know that uh, for most of us, we're well familiar with the idea of 
if we need to know how to get from New York to Florida, we need not go all the way north, all the way around the planet to come back up around and reach Florida. But the more direct route would be to go south on I-95 or to sail right along the Atlantic seaboard and be able to get to Florida that way. In other words, there's a right way uh, for us to sail or to drive or to fly. Um, and I love that. And the, uh, the stuff that Lewis has done in Mere Christianity, the, the, the writing there, the, the kind of thinking he's doing is so helpful to us as we see, as we, as we come to see how Christianity really does make uh, the best sense out of the world that we live in. Um, as it is in reality. And so it passes the, you know, the test for truth, which would be, you know, the, the correspondence theory of truth. That is, does the truth that we're espousing, does it correspond to the reality that we live in? And then the coherence test of truth. Does it indeed make sense? And when you, uh, when you spell out the Christian faith, that is, that there is a God who knows us fully, knows fully well that I'm a sinner, and yet loves me in spite of all of that. That just is so brilliant and amazing as to be uh, mind-blowing and humbling. Um, and it draws each and every one of us, doesn't it, to our knees, uh, to humble us that way, and to cause us to lift up the empty hands of faith and receive this gift of grace that God has provided for us in the person and work of Jesus Christ. So glad he hasn't left us in the dark when it comes to morality. So glad he hasn't left us in a silent world, uh, in a dark world, uh, or in some kind of chaotic world without a sure and certain word from him uh, about him, about him revealing himself to us, uh, about what we need to know about ourselves and about how we might be reconciled to the one who made us, to the one who loves us and so desires to have us be his sons and daughters. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this reality. And we're so grateful for older brother C.S. Lewis and the way he writes and the wisdom you gave him, his gift for metaphor, analogy, all of that, Lord. Uh, I pray, Lord, for each and every one of us uh, that this day we would realize that in Jesus, who has come, who has broken into this dark world and broken into our chaos uh, and brought us peace, peace with God, peace with one another and even peace within ourselves. We might lift up the empty hands of faith indeed and receive this gift of life that we find in the person and work of Jesus. Pray this in his beautiful and precious name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.